Welcome everyone to part one of text generation with Python and Keras and TensorFlow 2. So for part one, we're going to keep things simple. We're just going to import the main libraries, show you how to read in and import a text file, and then we'll focus on understanding the characters in that text file. Let's open up a new notebook and get started. All right, here I am at the notebook. I've already imported NumPy as NP, Pandas as PD, and Matplotlib. The last thing I'm going to import, which we don't do often, so that's why I want to specify it, is importing TensorFlow as TF, since later on in the notebook we'll be actually importing stuff directly as TF dot. Okay, so step one is to grab the data. You can check out the notebook that we provide for you. You can go to gutenberg.org to grab any free text you want from there. But in our case, we're gonna be choosing Shakespeare's works, which we've already downloaded for you. And they're actually in the same folder as the NLP notebook. So there's two main reasons we choose Shakespeare's works. One is that it's already a large corpus of text. It's usually recommended you have at least a source of a million characters to get some sort of realistic generation. And then second, this one's kind of more important, is because Shakespeare has a very distinct style. If you open up some random Shakespeare work, you can kind of tell the spacing and style of a play. Someone enters, someone exits, the names are capitalized, and then there's the phrases of what they say. So we'll be able to see our recurrent neural network actually duplicate that style just on a character by character basis. So I'm going to create a variable called path to file and go ahead and just write the full file path to wherever the text file is. In my case, this notebook is actually in the same location as it. So I just need to say shakespeare.txt. Go ahead and run that. And then let's read it in. We'll say text is equal to open and we'll say path to file. And then we'll just read it with mode R and then we call read. Okay, so that will go ahead and if we check out the text, let's just see the first 500 characters in it. So you notice that it has spaces and it also has these backslash N and that basically stands for new line. So when you print it out, it has a very specific style. So we print this out and we can see these are his sonnets and they're kind of spaced. So let's go ahead and choose some kind of random. Let's go let's say 4,500 to 4,000, let's say 800. And you can see here that clearly there's distinct spacing here. There's space to space, new line, new line, new line, some number for a sonnet, and then the sonnet again. So the character uh, recurrent neural network is actually going to be able to learn that. And much further along, if we actually start getting to his plays later on in this text, let's actually make this quite a bit longer. Let's say 10,000, run that. Um, let's actually make it 140. There we go. So we can see this Helena's turn to speak. So we can see her text that she's speaking. And if we expand on this further, we get 500 more characters here. You can see King, then the King speaks, then Helena speaks again, etc. Okay, so this is actually uh, very well structured. So we're gonna be using it. Let's go ahead and take that out. And next thing we wanna do is understand uh, the unique characters that are inside this text file. So to do that, one quick way to grab all the unique characters is to just cast it into a set and then we can sort that set. So if I run this, these are all the unique characters. And in fact, let's go ahead and just assign this as our vocab. So vocab is equal to sorted set text. And then we'll say vocab here. So we can see there's new line, there's just a space, exclamation point, uh, some numbers here, all capital letters, some punctuation, and then lowercase letters and then some braces for probably formatting later on. Okay, so that means if we check out the length of our vocab, there are 84 unique characters that we're going to be working with. And we'll have to keep that number in mind when designing the last dense layer of our neural network. Okay, that's it for this step, just reading in the text file. Main thing to note here is that we imported TensorFlow as TF, and also make sure you provide the correct path to the file. We already downloaded shakespeare.txt for you, and it's located in the NLP folder. Thanks, and we'll see you at step two, talking about text processing.